Now we've covered correlations, we can now move on to a linear regression. And what I'll do is I'll use the same data that we were using for the correlations. So we've still got the pay, holidays and productivity. And we'll look at the relationship now between holidays on productivity. And we'll do this via a simple regression. So if you go up to analyze and go down to regression and then across and down to linear, then it brings up the regression box here. And what we're doing in regression, we start using the terms now predictor variables and outcome variables. Although in SPSS, you'll notice they're labeled independent and dependent. So we're looking at the relationship between variables, but we couch it in different terms. We're looking at whether a particular variable predicts another variable and the amount of variance that it can account for. So one word of warning at this stage is although we're using the terms predictor and outcome, and this will be drilled into you, uh, we can't conclusively prove that this is a causal relationship when we're looking at these types of variables in regression. For that, you'd need an experimental design. We can generate a theory that, for example, maybe people who take more holidays will be more productive at work because they'll be more well rested. Uh, but equally, you could also argue that people who are more productive at work will get the work done quicker and therefore will have more time to take holidays. So this design doesn't allow us to conclusively prove that this is causal, but we can hypothesize that one particular variable is accounting for a particular proportion of variance in another variable. So what we'll do is we'll start this regression. So what we want to do is put holidays now in the independence box and we're saying that the amount of holidays is likely to predict the productivity of someone at work. So then the productivity will go in the dependent box and then in regression if you click on these boxes here you'll notice that there's loads of different options to run the regression and loads of different types of checks of the data. In the statistics box, for example, we'll have various options here. And then you can do all sorts of plots. And we'll cover this more next week when we go into multiple regression about how to test whether the data is suitable for a regression model. But today, we'll just keep things simple. And we can run this now. Now, once we've got the variables in the boxes, you can click on OK and bring up the output. And then if we run through these tables now, we'll just pick out and dissect what you need to get from these tables in a linear regression. And the first box you'll see is R here. And this is a Pearson's R correlation coefficient between the predictor variable and the outcome variable. What you might notice is that this value is exactly the same as when we just conducted a correlation coefficient between these two variables. In a li simple linear regression, the Pearson's R will always be exactly the same. And then in the next box, we get the R square. So you could calculate this just by taking the value of R and then squaring it. But in a linear regression, what this will do is it will use these sum of squares and divide the regression or the model sum of squares, divide that by the total sum of squares, and this is dividing the variance accounted for by the model, and then dividing this by the total variance in the data to give us a proportion of the variance which is explained by the predictor variable. So in this case here, we've got an R square of 0.189, which means that 18.9% of the variance in the outcome variable productivity is explained by the amount of holidays taken. Then we'll go on to the next table, which is labeled ANOVA table. And what this will do is when you conduct a linear regression, it will also calculate analysis of variance on this model to determine whether this proportion of variance that the model is accounting for is significant. 
It will do this by generating an F statistic, which is based on the mean square this time. So the, they take, you take the regression or the model mean square and then divide this by the residual mean square to get the F statistic, which is then used to calculate the p-value. And then the p-value will just simply tell you whether this overall model is significant in terms of the proportion of variance explained. So this example here has a p-value of 0 0.003. So we can say that the proportion of variance and productivity explained by holidays is significant. And then if we go on to the next table, which is the coefficients table, this table gives you all the information that you need if you wanted to feed these values into the regression equation. So to recap, we've got this regression equation then down here, and we've got the outcome variable y, and then we're using this equation here to predict values of y. And these variable, these values here are all contained in this table. So the first value is the b coefficient for the constant. And this corresponds to this bit of the equation, which is the b coefficient for the intercept. So when you're drawing a line of best fit or a regression line, this is the point at which the line will cross the y-axis. And then you've got the b coefficient for holidays, which is the predictor variable. And in the regression equation, this will be this bit, b1. And this determines the degree of slope of the regression line. And these so far are unstandardized coefficients. So they're in the original units of measurement. Usually, it's more useful for interpretation to use the standardized coefficient, which is beta, especially if you're doing a multiple regression, because then you can compare the relative importance or the relative magnitude of each predictor variable in terms of how well it predicts the outcome. So for this example, the beta coefficient is 0.435. Again, you might notice that this is also exactly the same as the correlation coefficient that we calculated before. And this will always be the case when you've got one predictor variable in the model. But this isn't the case for when you've got more than one predictor variable. So again, this although this might seem like we're just going over things that we've already done and we've already found out, hopefully this will make more sense in the context of multiple regression. Then what SPSS does is calculate this t-statistic, which is then used to calculate whether this is a significant predictor in the model. So for this example here, holidays is a significant predictor of productivity at p of 0 0.003. And again, this is stuff we already know because from the previous tables, but when you've got a multiple regression, you can have a significant overall model, but each predictor variable might not necessarily be a significant predictor of the outcome. So that's simple linear regression then. And it's handy just, for just to familiarize yourself with these tables and pick out the relevant bits in the tables so that then when we go on to multiple regression, then you'll be able to work out what's going on in these tables. Next week, I'll also run through how to report regression as well. So if you are writing it up for a paper or whatever, then what do you actually need to include? And we'll cover that next week.